kindly back away from the welder and nobody will get hurt. <laughs> What's up guys? Sniffling because it's cold out here and my nose is draining. <laughs> so got the welder out today. It's been a while. So good brush up here. This is my old trader I had. Uh, I sold about six months back my 24 foot full tilt trader when I got my new 40 foot trailer. And I had told the guy I sold it to that I would give him um, some fresh bumpers when I sold it and he just hadn't come back around. So now he's come back around and here's my old bumpers that I made originally, kind of a prototype version. You can tell they're kind of bent at various angles and whatnots. So um, basically I'm making a solid bumper that goes down the entire length of this trailer. So this is a Iron Bull 24 foot full tilt dual hydraulic trailer. We added quarter inch steel, 10 inch wide runners down this entire thing to keep the deck in the best shape possible for loading containers. This gentleman's not using it for containers, but he just wants to have the ability to move a container for a friend here and there if he wants to get some for himself and not have to buy them for me in the future, which is totally fine. Um, I don't mind helping someone out like that. I'm not looking to make money off every single person I meet. So, or if I meet him and it turns out this way, like I said, I don't mind helping him in the future. So what I'm doing is adding, like I said, about a 20 foot section. It's 21 in 21 feet long or 20 foot one inches long i think is what it came out to anyhow your uh winch stop is about here your your peak or your kind of measurement point so i know the trailer really well is right about here so right at the front of these you don't really want to go farther farther than that on the container and you got the big cleat right here you don't want to get the cleat stuck on this so it can't happen you can always jerk it over with the um the winch so I sold it to him with a winch, and the winch had a problem, but it had a warranty, so he turned it in for the warranty and got the new upgraded Badlands synthetic um, Apex winch that has a better motor similar to the War winch, a little bit higher quality than the typical Badlands one they had down there. I guess it's Badlands too, but the pre-Apex model. But yeah, so right now I just tacked these in place. Uh, I want to make sure they all lined up well before I got crazy on throwing heavy beads of weld on this stuff. Um, this is quarter inch steel here. This is eighth inch steel here. Um, I used quarter and quarter the first time and I have to admit felt a little bit more secure than these eighth. I just couldn't get my hands on any quarter up here. So I went with the eighth and we're probably going to end up, I was going to separate these pockets and gap them. But I think I'm going to just fill each pocket with a, with a, with a piece of a, a piece of a, a plank of, a, of the metal. So I think I'm just going to put one on each one and just kind of call it a day. He hasn't had it very long, but man, he's bent about everything he can. He bent that up, uh, ripped out his emergency brake control, and ripped out the rear lights. <laughs> so I'm not sure what he's using this for, but it's getting pretty thrashed. So I don't know. I think he might be renting this actually. So that might be part of the problem. When you rent stuff out, you just kind of cross your fingers and hope for the best and hope that deposit clears, you know, <laughs> when they come back with damage. So anyway, these aren't perfect either. When I first built these, I kind of, I didn't build them off each other but i kind of i think i wasn't really accurate in some of my measurements so i was kind of rushing to get it done and get it set up so some of the pockets are really close kind of this one got a little bit closer than this side um they're all hand laid up these trailers aren't made on an assembly line or if they are they're still kind of hand welded in place so like this rack may go this this channel may go further on this side than it does on that side and vice versa same as my 20 or my 40 foot trailer now they're not identical they're all hand laid up so you gotta expect that but yeah just figured i'd share this like i said i mean if i'm not building something with wood or a goat barn or a chicken coop or are you remodeling a shitty bathroom in a 1979 mobile home um sometimes i'm welding but uh this is a good little uh, startup I'm, I'm gonna be doing some welding for the blue ultra beast over there i'm gonna be welding up a front bumper for that uh from move i bought several months back and we had a hold on fires down here because we had a fire issue going on so this is a good brush up tax or nothing and we can do that as far as laying the welds out i'm sure my first couple will come out really ugly even my first tax were ugly i didn't even get a very any penetration down here but um yeah, my second one got better, better, better. And then when you start laying up the welds, the first will be horrible. It won't look like a stack of dimes, I can tell you that much. And then as I kind of get further along, you'll see it get a little bit better, a little bit better. So it is what it is. Um, but this will be a good warm up, like I said, running all these beads on here will be a good warm up for going over to the Blue Ultra Beast. Like I said, I'm putting a full custom off road bumper on the front of this thing. I'm welding in two separate really heavy duty swivels in the back to integrate with the swivels that came on that bumper. The guy integrated himself. He modified it. I'll show you real quick. If you're not familiar, because this is part of my van channel normally, but um, he had these little slip joint style um, 
you know, spinners here, a pretty ugly job. I mean, he just reinforced it. So I'll take this plate off. I'll reinforce this entire piece from behind. I'll keep that plate, but also reinforce it from behind. But I'll put a big spindle on that, big spindle on that. And by spindle, I mean something that can rotate. And I have some arms on here that'll hold a gas tank in a box. And on that side, a spare tire. This band's going to be going for sale here in the next like three to four months, tops. Um, so I'm going to be doing paint on it, welding the rear bumper into place, getting all that set up. Full paint job, like I said, putting one of my roof racks back on there, side ladder back on there, um, throwing in some exterior lights on the rack and in the bumper, throwing some exterior lights on the front bumper, and then um, uh, putting a solar panel on top, one solar battery, a small inverter in there, and doing a bed build out. So I'll, I'll showcase this on my other channel, my Adventure Ready uh, Van Life channel. And uh, I got a couple more vans. So I got that van to work on the future and that van to lift pretty soon. So for other uses. But anyway, I thought I'd share what I was doing. Uh, for those of you that are into welding or maybe desire to weld, this is the Vulcan Big Max 215. So this is going to do a couple different versions of welding types. Um, this is the Harbor Freight Special. Um, this is the Harbor Freight Cart. This is the Harbor Freight Welder. This is the Harbor Freight, you know, gun holder. Harbor Freight little snips. I mean, everything here is from Harbor Freight, and I can tell you um, this stuff works awesome. If you're, you know, wanting to dabble with welding, uh, get into it. Um, this stuff has a little electronic readout. My buddy has a 220 version of this. Next Step Up has a little bit better digital readout, so you can adjust all your little polarities and all your, your adjustments on here in the gauge. I think digitally on his, from what I recall, and uh, it works the same, but his is a little bit more accurate because of the digital readout, like I said. So, um, but like I said, this has been everything I've welded so far. I've welded with this. I'll be welding the bumper with this. And this is a little higher than most people start with. They usually get like the 140 or 160 or 180. I didn't buy the 215 because I thought I was a badass welder. Uh, a guy bought this, got into uh, doing um, U2B cages. And uh, he grew out of this welder immediately because he wanted to do fire faster production. He spent several thousand dollars on a welder. So I think I picked this up for like a hundred bucks. It was nothing. And it, it, it had the original spool in there. So um, very basic design. Um, but they look like all the rest, like the Lincolns and all their stuff that's out there. Whoa! Try to break all your shit. One, one, one setting here. But um, that's pretty handy to get that actually if it doesn't fall over. But uh, yeah, they're pretty basic. Um, I said Vulcans are just supposedly these are done by Lincoln. Uh, Vulcan is a subsidiary of Lincoln Welders, I think is what it is. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I think it's Lincoln or Miller or one of those, but I think it's Lincoln. But uh, yeah, you got your whole readout here so you can check, you know, what size steel are you you're trying to weld, uh, what type of wire are you using. This is a flux core. Um, you can see right there, gasless flux core welding wire. Does have the area for a gas tank in here and the, uh, the little topper to, to set it all up and get it all set there. Um, for gas welding, you want to be indoors, for, you know, less air. Most of my welding I do outdoors, so I haven't even gone to mess with gas, to be honest with you. I've welded with gas with my friend's welders before, but on this welder, I've strictly used the flux core gasless line feed. So and it's a little precarious putting a new line in here. That's about the only, the only, only learning curve other than that. Well, learning curve of welding too. But if you, if you got some friends that have some welding uh, experience or you go on YouTube, there's so many good channels for like welding tips. There's some guys that are really good at it and they're, they're very patient and they're very good at explaining it to us dummies that are just starting. So there's a lot of, a lot of knowledge out there on YouTube. Uh, you got to just dig around. I don't have any references to channels I watched. They were years ago, uh, months ago, I guess. But um, don't watch mine to learn how to weld. I can tell you that much. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's all Harbor Freight stuff. I just wanted to showcase that just to know that you don't have to go break the big chain. Harbor Freight, you know, uh, clamp. No, that's a Craftsman grinder. The Harbor Freight grinders are horrible. So I'll take that, take that away. Titanium, this is just their standard, you know, $60 special when it goes on sale. Um, it does change, you know, has a little adjustment in here for the brightness. It does change, um, the, you know, it blocks out obviously the harmful uh, uh, flash from the welder. Um, when you get these things, um, don't be a complete dummy like me and my buddy. We both got our stuff at the same time. We started welding them. Man, these are the worst shields humanly possible. And he got the cheap, cheap one, like the $30 special. And this was like the $100R one sale for 60 bucks. Well, in between this little plastic piece in here, so basically there was a film over top of here to keep it nice and clean and not damaged when it gets, you know, in shipping. Well, we took all that off sort of welding and I swear an hour in, we're like, man, I, I don't know, man, I just cannot see this stuff very clearly. And uh, there's another film that was inside, inside here between the, the little puck and, and, and the little the plastic, little pussy glass, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, don't be a complete dummy take both pieces of plastic up before you start welding it makes a big difference but yeah so we're just putting on some some rails here but i'd share that with you guys i'm always building something or doing something and uh, to me it's i'm not a master of too many trades but I, I i'm the jack of jack of some master jack of i don't know i do a bunch of shit so anyway stay safe out there guys if you have any questions on starting welding like i said i could help you out with kind of the dummies guide to what i did right and wrong and things like that but uh like i said there's a lot of good channels out there i can tell you 
specifically about welding specifics that would probably be more beneficial so check them out guys hope everyone's staying safe out there and getting your projects knocked out winter's coming